Subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos. World War I, also known as the Great War, is considered as one of the deadliest wars in history. Fought between the Triple Entente and the Central Powers between 1914 to 1918, the war claimed the lives of 15 to 19 million people and introducing a modern style of warfare the likes of which has never been seen before. With new technologies like the tank, flamethrowers, and machine guns emerging as a deadly tool in future warfare. Although many countries around the world participated in this so-called the Great War, what was the Philippines doing during this time? So without further ado, this is the Philippines' involvement in World War I. Prior to the war, the Philippines was recently annexed by the United States in the 1898 Treaty of Paris, following Spain's defeat in the Spanish-American War which happened that same year. But when Europe plunged into war in 1914, the United States declared its neutrality, as Americans at the time believed that going to war in Europe is unnecessary and wanted to stick to its isolation policy. However, their opinions changed when in May 7, 1915, a German U-boat submarine sailing off the coast of Ireland torpedoed the RMS Lusitania, killing 1,198 people on board, including 128 Americans, and was followed by the sinking of the SS Arabic on the 7th of August, which cost the lives of three Americans, seeding the first cracks between America and Germany. But that crack eventually broke on January of 1917 when British intelligence intercepted and exposed a German telegram secretly delivered by Foreign Secretary Arthur Zimmerman to the Mexican government. The letter persuades Mexico to attack the US if the country ended up at war with the German Empire. This angers the US government eventually declaring war against Deutschland on the 6th of April. So okay, what was the Philippines doing during this so-called Great War despite people getting killed in battle isn't great at all. Like I said in the beginning, we were an American colony at the time. So once the US entered the war, the US Congress issued the colonial government in Manila to draft 15,000 Filipinos to be integrated to the US Army. But the colony was able to assemble 25,000 men and form the Philippine National Guard. Not only that, the colony also contributed to one naval ship that is the USS Rizal, named after our national hero Dr. Jose Rizal, making the ship as the first and only time that an American ship was named after a Filipino hero. And originally, there were also plans on constructing submarines. This is the first time in the history of the US Navy, but was canned by Congress and the Filipino public. Reason for this is they were not needed at the time, especially most of the submarine warfare only situated around the Atlantic Ocean. And if the US government approved the project, it would take a long time for the submarines to get there. But all of the US demands from the Philippines didn't solve action due to the war was ended in 1918. However, some Filipinos have managed to participate the chaos of trench warfare and saw the bloodshed of no man's land in Europe. There are tons of examples of this during my research, but I'm only focusing on the most interesting ones which stand out. The first one are the 4,000 Filipino contract workers in Hawaii that work on pineapple and sugar plantations were drafted into the Hawaiian Infantry Guard, while others working from the agricultural areas in California and other states volunteered or drafted as soldiers, cooks, musicians, engineers, vehicle repairers, and medical workers on the battlefield and the American Red Cross. There's another article I read from Inquire.net about two Filipinos named Enrique Hernandez and Victor Mendiola who worked both as cooks for the USS Cyclops, which disappeared on March 4, 1918, in the infamous Bermuda Triangle. Another from that article is Julio J. Enereta, who served as a minesweeper in the USS Aether. But what's interesting about this man is because he enlisted in the Navy on February of 1919. Three months after the armistice was signed back in November 11, 1918, but because of his job is to remove sea mines that were left out after the war, he was still considered as a World War I veteran in 1921. Not only he served in the First World War, but he also fought in the Second World War as well, making him the last surviving Filipino to fought both world wars, as he died in April 15, 2005 at the age of 103 in San Diego, California. Another thing the Philippines contributed to the war is they confiscated 22 German merchant ships from Philippine ports. Seven of them were used as trading ships by the locals and the rest was taken by America as a gift. While the crews of these ships were sent to an internment camp in Baguio, they provided resources from sectors of the mineral and agriculture industries. In support of the Allied forces, they also bought liberty loans to compensate the relatives of Filipino troops fighting in Europe's war. While Germans and Austrians in the island were put under monitored surveillance for a 
possible collaboration with the Central Powers. I saved the last for the most famous Filipino who fought in the Great War, and that is Tomas Mateo Claudio, who became the first Filipino casualty in the war. His involvement into the conflict started in November 2nd, 1917, when he enlisted himself into the Army's 41st Division and set sail to Europe on December 15th. Upon arrival in northern France, he was originally assigned in the trench sector of Tulle, but later was moved to a reserve division near Paris. Not long after, he got pulled out and was sent to the Moti Terre Front. In the Battle of Chateau Terre, as part of the 2nd Marin Offensive, Claudio and his unit fought hard to the teeth and nails, defending their trench against wave after wave of German troops, trying desperately to break allied lines, but Claudio won't see the light of day, as he was shot by enemy fire and died from his wounds on June 29, 1918. He was buried in Manila North Cemetery, and to honor his name, the Tomas Claudio Elementary School and the Tomas Claudio Colleges was established in his hometown of Morong Rizal, while in Manila, the Tomas Claudio Bridge was created in the late 1920s. Thank you guys for watching this video, and that last part, you know, I kind of butchered some of the French uh, words there. Uh, if you're a French person watching watching this, sorry, <laughs> I try to uh, pronounce it right, but it's very hard, you know, to pronounce it. But, you know, I still love the French language because French is one of the most beautiful languages in the world. And I really hope, you know, uh, I could pronounce it in 